Hello everyone, so this is Mary Ron Apilar from Besat English 3A. So for today's video, we're gonna talk about and answer the questions about Margaret Ronda's essay on ecopoetics and epochal imaginings. So let's proceed to the question number one. Question number one, using Neroda's poem, how did Paris illustrate the ecological violence and displacement brought by capitalism? So, what passes for immaculate reasoning today is based on a falsehood that has been elevated to previously inconceivable heights. The natural resources in conjunction with human creativity and labor exist solely to become alienable commodities. This fiction allow, uh, allow us to think that um, at the end of our existence um, is the market rather than the market exists to serve human needs. Um, in the manner we live now, under the hyper-commoditized logic of neoliberalism, Neroda radically modified his poetry in reaction to catastrophe. He abandoned his oblique, solitary, experimental poetry at the onset of the Spanish Civil War in favor of a decisive style that would drive people to action. Question number two, what Gush argued about in terms of realist fiction and ecological representation? So he argues that tackling climate change just through the lens of science fiction is insufficient since climate change is not merely a futuristic or hypothetical occurrence. The reaction of literary realism books to ecological catastrophe remains insufficient. Gosh hopes to see a vigorous emergence of realism fiction that does not hide the truth of climate change but addresses, um, addresses it as it being experienced. As the introductory excerpt from Rob Nixon illustrates Gosh perspective on the issues climate change brings to literary representation is probably one of the most restricted as <clears throat> as the problem is frequently conceived of in a I mean in a larger term that realism fiction so question number four what is planetary crisis in literature how did an author amplify this context in his literary works so literature and the arts have been drawn to depiction of physical surroundings and human environment interaction since prehistory um, the contemporary environmentalist movements which first appeared in the late 19th century and then again and then in the 1960s gave rise to uh, plethora of fictional and non-fictional texts concerned with humans evolving connection with the natural world. However, um, it was not until the early 1990s that the long-standing interest of literature studies in these issues gave rise to the initiatives known as ecocriticism, an elastic and loosely coordinated movement whose contributes have thus far been most visible within its home discipline of literature but whose interest in alliances extend across various art forms and media. Eco-criticism intersects with its sister humanities disciplines such as environmental anthropology, environmental history, and environmental philosophy. In areas such as narrative and image analysis, we begin with a brief summary of the nature, relevance, and, and evolution of literature environment studies in the first two parts. 
We then go into a greater detail about six specific areas of interest. The imagination of place and place attachment, the enlisted and critic of scientific inquiry models in the study of literature and arts, the examination of the significance of gender differences and environmental representation, the cross-pollination of eco-critical and post-colonial scholarship as eco-criticism has expanded its horizons beyond its original focus on Anglo-American imagination, eco-criticism and post-colonial scholarship. So let's proceed to the question number five. What is meant by location and dislocation in this essay? Illustrate through examples of literary poems. So dislocation is construction in which a referential constituent occurs in a special intonation or grammatically separate part of a class, sometimes referred to as outside the class. Poetry, like other forms of literature, literature is written to share ideas, express emotions, and create imagery. Poets choose words for their meaning and acoustics, arranging them to create a tempo known as a meter. Poetry is um, essential aspect of art and society today. The United States um, Library of Congress select a poet laureate each year to represent the art of poetry in America. Poems from Shakespeare sonnets to Maya Angelou's contemplative composition have been read and repeated for decades.